Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I've had a few people ask me what I use for password storage. Now, I'm going to say right from the get-go, I don't trust online storage solutions. Uh, I know that some people love Bitwarden and uh, they've used it and it's probably safe and secure uh, and other ones too, but I just do not allow any of my data to be stored on the internet. I don't allow my pictures, my videos, nothing like that to be stored on the internet except my videos on YouTube that I'm uploading knowing full well that they're going to be seen by the public. So I don't store any of my documents, I don't store passwords, nothing on the internet. Everything is local. So today I'm going to show you what I use to store all of my passwords locally on my machine. So the program I'm going to show you also works on your smartphone. So you can transfer your database back and forth between your smartphone and your desktop. So let's go to the software manager and I will show you what I use. Type in KeyPass XC. So there's also just a basic KeyPass. Now the difference between the two, uh, they're both free open source password managers, but the key difference is that KeyPass XC is a community developed fork of KeyPass. So KeyPass, while it's still functional and works well, uh, it's primarily for Windows users, so its development has been less active than KeyPass XC. So that's the one that I recommend is KeyPass XC. So we just go ahead and install it. Now it says 799 megabytes to download. I'm not convinced that it's actually that big. Uh, 2.7 gig of space required. I just I I just don't believe that because oh now here we go. Now once it's done, it says oh it's 49 megabytes. So yeah. So once it's done, I'm going to close this and I'm going to type it into the start menu and it'll show up here. I'm going to right click on it and add to panel. So that puts it right down here. So let's move this over here to the left where I use. This is the stuff I use more often on the left. So then we just go ahead and open it up. So the first thing we have to do is create a database. So let's just go ahead and do that. Hit the create database button. Um, database name. Continue. And we're just going to use the default here. Uh, this is the, uh, the database format. Um, if I use the KDBX3, I can open it with earlier versions. I don't need to do that. And as far as decryption time, one second works perfectly fine for me. Uh, you could increase it, but it'll take longer for it to open. And for encryption algorithm, I use the AES 256 bit and then hit continue. Now, before I type in the password, you'll notice down here it has a couple options. Key file. I'm not going to use a key file. Uh, down here, if you own a YubiKey or only key, this is kind of nice because you can use it for additional security, which is great. I don't use the OB key for this, uh, so I'm just going to type in a password. So the password I'm going to use is I'm going to use Bandon, and I'm going to use three dollar signs, and then I'm going to add 2025, open bracket, and then I'm going to type in USA. So this one I can remember, and if I have to, I can write it down somewhere here at the office. Nobody else comes in here except one or two people. And so uh, people that I trust, it's never going to be uh, compromised. So I don't think anybody's going to break this one. So uh, yeah, this to me, I'm confident enough. But if you wanted to, you could add some more characters and do the generate password. Problem with that is, I can't remember that password, and I need to sometimes use this on the fly. This one I can remember. And you also have to remember is that, first off, somebody has to get access to your database. So it's not just them cracking this, this uh, the password. It's them actually getting a hold of your database first. So this is what's critical. Make sure that no one can get a hold of your database. That's what's critical. And if this is stored locally on my machine, not on the cloud, Nobody is ever going to have access to this database, much less try to figure out the password. So I'm confident in using this password. Okay, so I'm just going to hit done. <laughs> Continue with weak password. So it's going to ask me where do I want to put this database, and I'm just going to store it right here on the desktop. I created a folder called passwords just for the sake of this tutorial. And so I'm going to call the database passwords and hit save. Okay, so then I am given this window right here, and it is ready for me to start adding my passwords. 
The first thing I want to do though is I want to start adding my groups. So I'm going to add a new group right here and I'm going to call this websites. Okay, and then I'm going to go back to root and add another group. Now, if I added a group here under websites, it would just add a subgroup. I don't want to do that. I want to go back to root. Now, if you do that accidentally, of course, you can just take, if you make a subgroup, you can just take it and drag it back into root. It's, it'll be fine. And I want to create a new group called local LAN. And what this is, is this is passwords for all of my uh, computers on the local network. And then let's add another one here called social media. And you can move these around here. You can organize them. Whoops. See, I just actually dragged it in there. Okay, so there we go. Now let's go ahead and start adding passwords. Let's um, add one to social media. Let's click the plus button here. And let's say that uh, we're going to add our Facebook. Now, I don't have a Facebook account, but let's just suppose I do. Uh, Facebook and my username would be whatever it is. And now for password, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, if I've already got a Facebook account, I'm going to turn this little eye on, by the way, so I can see the password. Here's where I would add it. But here's the nice thing about it is if I'm just setting up an account, I can go ahead and generate a really strong password now. I can use this password generator. This is where I would generate a really strong password. Now, the reason why I didn't use this password generator to create a password for the database was because I needed to remember it. I don't need to remember this because all of the sites that I visit and all of my accounts, I can't remember any of the passwords. If somebody were to put a gun to my head and say, what's your password? I couldn't tell them. <laughs> so. Uh, the reason being is because whenever I log on to a site, I open up my password manager. So I could give this thing 16 characters, which would be an excellent password. And then I just copy this right here or just apply password. And there it is. And then whenever I log on to my sites, I always open up my password manager. And then I copy the password and paste it in. I never know it from memory. Uh, because they're just too strong. And I don't want one that I can remember because if it's one I can remember, then somebody could actually crack it. So that's why all of my passwords kind of look like this. And so all I have to do is click, well, I actually put in the website, www.facebook.com. Um, I could actually add um, tags. If I'm looking for it, I can actually search by tags and then I can add notes. But anyways, yeah, it's critical to use very strong passwords. So if you have passwords that that are very weak, uh, like Facebook or whatnot, you go out, I would suggest changing them to something that you can't remember and then use a password manager uh, to, to log in and then copy it. But I mean, that is that is ensuring, though, that you can remember your master database password to get into it if you can't and you think you might forget that well then you're better off just sticking with what you have so anyways all of mine are very uh very difficult to to uh type in and remember so i just copy them and then i paste them into my website and then i'm done so anyways yeah so we have local land media so uh, websites you can have any group that you want uh it's it's limitless so anyways you have your database here um, it automatically saves your database so you don't have to go save your database as. When I close this database, watch this, automatically closes, doesn't ask me. So I just go down here and open this again. It remembers where the database was. And uh, ask me for my password and I'm in. So yeah, very sophisticated program. It's got a lot of other features, uh, like your database settings. You can go here. Uh, you can change the password if you want to. Uh, browser integration. I don't do browser integration because I'm just not, I'm not convinced that everything is secure. So I don't want any of my passwords being stored uh, with my browser. And so I don't use this feature. Now you can also have multiple databases too, not just groups. And so if you close this, let's just say we just close it. And you'll notice right here, the database is right here in this passwords, passwords folder. So I can create a new database or just double click on this one and open it. 
So for me, trying to remember all of my passwords is just absolutely frustrating. I can't do it. Uh, so I don't worry about it. I use my password manager. I've been using this program for years and years, and this is all I ever use. Yeah, it takes a few more steps. If I go to a website, sure, if I have to log in, I've got to open up my password manager, copy and paste. But for me, that peace of mind is just, it's worth it. It's worth the extra 10 or 15 seconds for me to wait to log in till I get my password. I'm cool with that, but I think it's very critical that we have very strong passwords ones that we can't remember, but have access to when we need it. So incidentally, this database here is right here, this passwords database. Now I could actually take this a password file, copy it to my phone and, and install KeePass XC on my phone and open it there. Now I don't do that. I do use it with my tablet, but I don't use it with my phone because my phone has easy access to the internet and I don't get on a lot of websites with my phone. In fact, I don't get on actually any websites with my phone uh, that I have to log in with. I access a lot of websites, but I don't log in with my phone. Never have, never will. I think that it's just too easy for a phone to be hacked, and I just don't, uh, I don't think it's um, secure in my opinion. I may be wrong. You may have a different opinion. But now I do use this on my tablet because my tablet does not have uh, cellular access. It's only through the Wi-Fi only through the network, and when I get on different networks uh, that I go to, they're secure, and I don't have to worry about it. So anyways, KeePass XC, it's a wonderful program for storing all of your passwords. I recommend it highly. The only one thing that I do recommend is make sure that you remember that master database, and then once you create that database, add all your passwords, back this file right here up multiple times, and you're good to go.